Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but obviously nervous. I mean, you are. I mean, you just. You know. But once we get on, and once we're doing it, we'll love it because, of course, it's the reaction. The whole thing now is when we're running it, we don't really get any audience reaction. And of course, on Friday from the start, we'll, we'll be getting a lot of, uh, hopefully, a lot of reaction. When they put it all together, it's just fantastic. It's so fantastic. I love it. What's been the most... Oh, I've got to go on. Sorry. Anyone who tells you that they're, um, they're not nervous uh, before they go on is um, either not very good or lying. Uh, because, you know, that's part of it. If you're not nervous, then there's something wrong. Um, but that's the, the buzz of it. It's, it's a nice kind of fear. Oh, yeah. It's so important to make someone happy. Next we'll see the final dress rehearsal and then the cast will face an audience for the very first time. That's tomorrow night on Central News. Don't miss it. Well, they faced you. What did you think of it? <laughs> they did and they were absolutely brilliant. Very, very funny and lots and lots of audience participation. Brilliant. You will love it. We've been joined by our very own Buttons now. No, oh, nice. oh, no one could accuse you two of being the obese sister. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't anyway. Only two shopping days to Christmas and only three days left before our football clubs face the kind of fixture congestion that makes festive shopping seem like a stroll in the park. And we think turkeys have it tough at this time of year. Four games in nine days is the norm. Forests have brought in reinforcements in the shape of Neil Harris. Derby are worried about injuries and suspensions to their small squad and Leicester are more concerned about how their players will cope with the rush of games. For us having a fairly uh, ageing squad, I think it's obviously more of a concern than maybe to, to some other uh, teams. But I'm fairly sure we can, we can come through this period of four games um, in fairly good shape. And they need to be. Leicester are in mid-table and have let points slip lately. They hope to go into the new year challenging for a playoff place. So they have to start the Christmas rush with a home win over bottom club Rotherham on Boxing Day. Well, two of Derby County's footballers took time out today from their preparations to help deliver hundreds of presents to children at a family centre in the city. It was Santa who actually handed out the presents at the Step-In Family Centre on Stepping Lane in Derby, but the club's director of football and players, Marco Wright and Tom Huddleston, were there to help out. It's the kind of publicity that for once gives footballers a good name. They recognise that this is a part and parcel of what their duty is to the community and uh, they enjoy it very, very much. And it, uh, it's when you see the kids' faces when you come down, it's absolutely wonderful. Part and parcel of Christmas. The centre yeah. offers help to vulnerable youngsters and their parents, giving support and advice. The presents are part of the Give a Gift campaign, in which firms and individuals drop off presents at Pride Park, where they're wrapped and then delivered. Well, now motorsport and a rival to the Formula One series will start next year. The A1 Grand Prix will involve teams from 25 countries, all driving identical cars. And that's good news for a company in Derbyshire. For those who feel Formula One has sacrificed thrills and spills for technical excellence, A1 Grand Prix offers an antidote. All the cars will be the same, all the engines the same, with one team from each of the 25 competing countries. The concept has been developed by a man who normally likes his racing to be done on horses. A1 Grand Prix is the World Cup of Motorsport, Grand Prix of Nations. 25 nations vying to become the world, hold the World Cup of Motorsport in their hands. 
meeting 25 nations, representing 80% of the world population. All the cars are exactly parallel. Um, the cars, I believe, are at the highest pinnacle of their ability with no driver aids. Um, and it's a very exciting package. The cars will be made in Huntingdon and the V8 3.4 liter engines will be made by Zytec Engineering in Repton, Derbyshire. We've expanded, expanded various different departments and we're also taking on between 10 and 15 personnel. So we're very, very pleased to be able to give people extra employment within the local area. There'll be a minimum of 10 races with plenty of overtaking and plenty of crashes. In fact, unlike Formula One, A1 promises passion rather than procession. So you're not honestly trying to make a little story for footballers at Christmas, <laughs> No, you? I'm not. All that money and they don't have to go Christmas shopping either. Quite. Thank like you. most men then, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Finally tonight, we've all heard of the 12 days of Christmas, but how about the 12 dangers of Christmas? Mm, with all those excited children, fairy lights and tipsy party guests not around, cool. it's no wonder we get the occasional festive foul up. But as Peter Beer reports, <laughs> even bottle tops and crackers can lead to Christmas calamities. <laughs> Meet Mr. Bean from Nottingham. He's ready for some festive fun, but is he ready for the unexpected? There are very many dangers, particularly around the home, where people, through the excitement of Christmas, are there opening presents and doing all the joy things that they wish to do. But of course, there are the many hazards that are put there with everything that we're onto. Ah, time to pull a cracker. What's this? No one to pull it with. Allow me to do the honours. In fact, in the year 2000, British Hospital has reported four broken arms from cracker pulling incidents. Now then, doing a spot of watering, are we? Is it for the house plants? OK, go on, you show us then. Stop! Stop, you imbecile! Have you taken leave of your senses? In fact, since 1996, 31 people have died watering the Christmas tree while the lights are still on. Ah, enjoying a festive tipple, are we? So, how many have you had? Now, oh, come on, really? Oh dear, lost the bottle opener. In fact, in the past two years, there have been over 540 people admitted to hospital attempting to open beer bottles with their tea. So, ladies and gentlemen, have a Merry Christmas and a safe one. Don't try any of that. No, time. I don't think so. How can you break your arm pulling a Christmas cracker? How? Um, How is that possible? Mm, crackers, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Let's take a look at the weather forecast. <laughs> Central weather with BMIBaby.com. Hi there, it's been a few years since there's been a remote chance of having a white Christmas this year. It looks as though it's coming up trumps more about that in a while. But before we get to Christmas, extremely mild from one extreme to the other. Tonight, temperatures no lower than 10 or 11. That would be good for a daytime at this time of the year. Now, tonight and tomorrow morning, grey bits and pieces of drizzle about the place. Nothing remarkable. The most remarkable thing will be the mild air and the breeze picking up through tonight and picking up through tomorrow, getting fairly strong as we go through the day. The day brightening up, but that wind in increasing strong average speeds but gusting at times up to 50 miles per hour. So brighter tomorrow afternoon, extremely mild highs of 12 Celsius. Cor, what a scorcher. Then we'll be into Christmas Eve and the temperatures dip back during the daytime to normal December standards but later in the day they'll be dipping even further and that's the beginnings of cold air for Christmas. It means that any showers coming down uh, through the course of Friday could well later on start to fall as sleet and the big question is whether on Christmas Day we see any of those showers because it will be cold enough to fall as snow. Keep your fingers crossed we'll see some showers. <laughs> Central 10 day weather line, call 09069 19 14 19. Central weather with BMIBaby.com, the airline with tiny fares. And that's all from us. Phil Brewster will be here with an update of the main stories here in the East Midlands. 
Right now, though, it's time for the national and the international news with Mark Austin and Nina Hussain. From all the team here, though, have a very good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.